friend inherited these beautiful antique fishing lures and we want them to be displayed in our aquarium room. Uh, originally they were mounted in a pretty dated uh, oak finished shadow box that didn't really go with um, our decoration in that room. So I am going to today remount them in a new shadow box with a gorgeous antique weathered gray frame and I'm going to have you guys along while I work on this. So the first thing that I did is I took the back out of the frame. This is the back of the frame. I took the back out of it and I mounted a piece of black foam, craft foam, um, onto it. I wanted to make sure that there was a nice solid color background for all of the colors because some of them are really quite amazing. If you look at these antique lures, a lot of them still have the paint on them and the finishes are really neat. So I wanted to make sure you could really see them and I also wanted to make sure that the hooks did not scratch the backing and that they were held nicely in place so that they didn't scratch other uh, lures and such. So the foam board allows me uh, to place the hooks into the matting um, so that you can both see them and so that they don't damage each other. So the, that's the first thing that I did. Um, I believe I just used white Elmer's craft glue to do this. I started this project a while ago and never finished it. So now, since it's the day before Valentine's Day, I figured I would uh, finish this and get it hanging up in our aquarium room for him. Uh, so next I am going to arrange the hooks in a manner um, that I think looks pretty. And then I'll show you how I'm going to mount them. So stay tuned. Okay guys, I have everything pretty much mounted um, so that it's in a position that I like. Here, I'll spin it this way so you guys can see what I'm doing and kind of get an idea of the look that I'm going for. So the way that I'm going to mount these is that I'm going to use acid-free foam mounting stickers. And the reason I showed that I'm using the acid-free photo-safe stickers or, or foam pieces, they come, you can buy them in a roll, they come on sheets. These ones have already been cut into little squares. I actually took them and I cut them even smaller uh, because I do not want to see them. I want them to disappear behind the lures. Um, I have actually taken these ones that are pre-cut like this and cut them into little bitty tiny pieces when I need just a very small bit of adhesive. So they do cut really easy with scissors. Um, pretty simple. You can also get them as little circles. They come as one long piece of foam tape. So it really all just depends on what you're wanting um, or what your project calls for. Uh, also, um, if you did not want to use um, the foam, craft foam as your backing. You could use cork. If this comes in a roll and in sheets, you can see I've already cut a piece out of this to use for a different project. Uh, I was using this just as a holder for safekeeping for these lures so that I didn't poke myself with them. Um, you could also use felt, you could use fabric, you could use a myriad of other um, materials. It all just really depends on the look you're going for, the color scheme in your room. The nice thing about this foam, um, craft foam, is that it comes in like a zillion colors. So you can get it to match your frame, your home, room decor, whatever you want. Um, to, you know, kind of go along with the color of the lures, all of those kinds of things. So there's lots and lots of choices to be had 
in doing this project and uh, it really makes it easy to be personalized. It's a nice gift for Father's Day. It's a nice gift for your boyfriend for Valentine's Day. It's a nice gift for your dad for Christmas. I mean, you can do all myriad of um, things like this. And it doesn't even have to be lures. This just happens to be the project that I'm working on. But shadow boxes are really, really great for displaying you know, wedding mementos or personal achievements, all that kind of good stuff. So this is just one way to create a, um, a shadow box. There are tons of other ways to do it, but this one is just quick and simple and uh, really lets the lures stand out as the central focus. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, get all of these mounted. I'll show you how I am doing that. First, I'm going to um, take one of my lures, and I really want to see, you know, how much foam do I need? How um, how big of a piece will I need to hold it? Do I want to do a piece here and a piece here? You know, so you have lots of different choices. I actually prefer to go smaller rather than larger it just ensures that you really don't see them now this stuff has backings on both sides so you want to be very careful that when you start cutting this real small it can be difficult to get the um backing off of really super tiny pieces i have actually at some points resorted to scissors um, and tweezers and things to try and pull the backings off of this stuff. It can be a little bit finicky. And then you'll end up with all these little nice little pieces of paper all over your craft room, which is always fun. Okay, I'm going to spin this in my direction can make sure that I get this all set the way I like it. How does that look? Looks pretty darn good. Try to get these hooks set so that I don't overreach the maximum depth of the uh, shadow box. Because that is the last thing I need. Maybe we'll let him go that way. He sure doesn't want to sit flat going this way. I may need to move the pieces. Get them to sit flat. There we go, that's better. Alrighty. Now, I'm going to do this guy in the middle. Let's see exactly how I want him to sit so that I can make sure I place the foam core in the right place. So I don't really want him sitting like this. So I don't want to put the adhesive on the side. I kind of want him to be propped up. So I want to put it more like on the back down here. And very interestingly, as I was originally working on this project, I was very curious to, um, learned some information about these lures and exactly how old they were and when they were manufactured and who manufactured them and I found out some very interesting things about some of these lures especially the older ones uh, there's some here that were made in the let's see can I get it pretty centered does that look pretty centered Looks good to me. 
So I found out that um, share with you some of my little notes. Um, this little guy, the hula popper, he was made in the late 1940s. Um, this one is called the Heaton Darting Zara, and it was made in the late 1920s and early 1930s. The Spook Sinker, the in the Yellow Shore Minnow, were made, this guy and that guy were made in the 1930s all the way to the 1960s. Some of these were made as late as the 1970s. And uh, it was really interesting because um, Bobby's grandfather, um, his whole family is actually from Shreveport. Um, they lived in New Orleans and then ended up in Shreveport. And several of these lures were actually made by a company called the L.B. Cook Bait Manufacturing Company um, in Shreveport. So his grandfather was an avid supporter of uh, local small businesses, which I think is super awesome. Um, and kind of gives these lures even more history than they had before. So I am going to go ahead and continue uh, placing all of these and I will show you what it looks like as soon as I am done. Okay guys, so I have got all of the lures attached to the foam board using the um, foam stickers and as you can see everything's held on there really good nice and sturdy so the next thing is before you actually put this in the frame you really really want to make sure that you get any bits of dust or little bits of without getting stabbed by a hook um, of debris or anything that's on here, the bits of paper from the um, from the foam stickers, all that kind of stuff. You could use canned air. I'm just gonna um, and use some tweezers or needle nose pliers to catch some of these little bits that don't want to come off. Looks like a Tabasco hair. Our border collie's name is Tabasco. He leaves little fur gifts everywhere he goes. Alrighty, now that we've got everything all cleaned up. <laughs> We're going to put it in the frame. So the nice thing about this frame is it just has the, I don't know if you can see them, the little photo tabs right there. So all we need to do is make sure that this glass is clean and then slide our backer board right on in. going to kind of set them at a V because I don't want the hooks going all wobnobbly. So just going to come on. You can do it. Oh, catching a photo corner. Just 
didn't want to slide in. And now I think we've got it. Catching on something. All right, I'm going to get this all set in and then I will come back and show you what it looks like. Alrighty guys, I have got it all set up in the frame and I am going to take it downstairs and put it up on the wall.